Hi, everyone. This is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. So the last couple of podcasts I've made, I have talked about uh, the first one that I talked about around the subject was why women feel unsafe around men and just kind of like what's happening collectively, personal stories, what I've seen, what I've learned, all in the journey of understanding and the for the ability to shift to change it for the positive, right? This is like a whole, we're going down this exploration to figure out how to shift the timeline into a unity timeline, into one where men and women and all genders are honored for who they are and what they what they are, just being their authentic self, right? So I highly recommend checking out that podcast, Why Women Feel Unsafe Around Men. And then the, the next one was why <clears throat> or how men can actually create safety for women. So like positive action, more about what's happening collectively and just like literally this is what we can do, right? And then I was like sitting back and thinking about it and I was like, you know, as a woman being born in a female body, I love men so much and this is despite all of the negative experiences I've had with men despite being raised by a very abusive man (laughs) all of the things I still love men so much and I have so many amazing men in my life and I realized I really want to dedicate a whole podcast to talking about this, about what exactly I really appreciate about men, because I talk about women all the time, and how much I love you, (laughs) and how much we are amazing, and I was like, you know what, why am I not doing this for men as well, like, we all need this, this is how we create unity in the timeline, and if you're a woman listening to this, I really invite you to appreciate vocally the men in your life to them and to the women around you just like in general just talk about how much you love them and how much you what you do appreciate about what they do for you who they are how much you love them for being their authentic self because the more that we focus on what we love and the more that we focus on what we appreciate the more we attract this into our life so If you want to talk about like how do we actually create a unity timeline where men and women and all genders are working uh, together to build this new earth that we're all craving so much, like create paradise on earth, we need to really bring everyone back home. And for thousands of years, we have had suppression of women and the masculine energy being out of control. And because, the, the, again, masculine energy is so beautiful when channeled in a way that is creating and protecting and providing um, and using it for positive, basically. Let's put it that way. Um, and right now in the last, you know, at least especially 50 years, we've had this huge shift of the feminine being like, what the fuck? And finally feeling the ability to be very vocal. And this is what you have in the rise of what we call feminism of just like women being like I'm here to support women I'm here to empower women I'm all about this Uh, this is who I am as well and also we want to do that and in a way where we're we're not outcasting men because what happens is like they say one extreme usually bears another extreme like it equals out so because if you think about like when you pull back a rubber band and you release it, it goes shooting forward in the other direction. And this is what I see, hap- this happens in like a lot of different things. Like, uh, and w- you see this in what's happening in the collective right now between the masculine and the feminine. Like masculine has been suppressive of the feminine for so long. And then the feminine is like coming back hard. <laughs> Just like, we're taking back our power. And also we hate men and da, da, da. But that's not the answer. The answer is to be balanced in the middle. And I feel that I'm excited to be a voice in this. And I see a lot of other people who are very awakened souls saying like, especially women saying like, I don't care what has happened in the past. I honor it. Okay, it's not that I don't care. I honor it. I heal from it. I call it out. And also, I love men. I'm here for the balance in the middle. 
we don't want men hating women. We don't want women hating men. We want everyone to love each other and to work together on a collective sense. This is what I'm talking about. And as a society, right? So <clears throat> this is like, this is what I'm here for. And this is what this podcast is about. So I'm really excited. Let's dive right in. I, I was really excited to make my my notes about this this morning. Like I every morning I journal I write out everything that's happened since last time I journaled, and then I reflect on what I'm grateful for, and then I sit down and I write out, okay, what podcast am I going to make today? Like, what am I excited to share with the world? And this one was really fun, because I also asked my community and I asked my girlfriends, like, what do you appreciate about men? And it was, I was realizing that when we're in this vibration of appreciating and gratefulness and gratitude, I know this already, but it's just interesting for it to be in this specific way about men. Like, I could tell that all of us, the women in us, were all really feeling yummy about it. It was just like, I could feel how, like I came home and I wanted to like hug Faraday and like appreciate him more. Like I was just like, wow, this is amazing. Uh, so I really, I'm activating all of you women to do this. Like to, you can even journal. Um, what helped me was to write down men in my life that show up for me and then write down ex specifically what I appreciate about them. Because sometimes, yeah, you can talk, you can also journal like collectively what you appreciate about men. But I find it's like even more powerful to think of someone and then write it down and then message them that like, wow, I really appreciate that how that you show up for my life in this way. I appreciate this about you. I love I love you. Thank you for being in my life. This is how we heal this, babes. We can do this. This is how we do this. OK, so here are some of my notes. What I love about men, I love their consistency. I love when they show up for me in 3D things and I can really count on them. Like when they say they're gonna be there at 9 a.m., they are there at 9 a.m. And when they say like, like, you know, like I'm gonna show up for you, I'm gonna help you out, you know, like they're, they do this. And I love how my body physically feels activated and safe and nurtured around them. Like I'm just like, ah. and I'm, I want, and each of these, I am going to like sometimes speak about a specific man in my life. So this one, when I thought about like, of, and of course all of these, it's like all of these, I could say this about Faraday. So just putting that out there, Faraday, when you're, when you listen to this, when you edit my podcast, I appreciate you for editing my podcast. And also, um, I want to talk about other men because I, I love Faraday and I want to talk about him a lot in this podcast and also I want to talk about other amazing men in my life. So this one, I, I thought of my, my friend Aaron. He's like my brother and Aaron is like, he really shows up in the 3D for me and I can always count on him. And he's always like, I love you so much, Brittany. You deserve the world. Like, and I remember one time we were hanging out and he was like, Brittany, I really just want to let you know that, like, I'm proud to be seen in public with you. And I was like, I just started laughing. Like, I really appreciated it. I was like, oh. And then I also was, like, started laughing. So I was like, what does that even mean, Erin? And he's just like, just who you are. Like, you're so powerful. You're so beautiful. Like, just, like, how you carry yourself. And, and I was just like... I really love this compliment. And also when an Aaron Aaron is like a triple Aries, so whenever he says he's going to do something, he 100% does it and he really shows up and he really like overly communicates. He's like sending me voice messages all the time. I love you. Here's this thing. Here's an update about this thing and da da da. And we've worked on so many projects together here on the island. We've like created festivals together. We've um, <laughs> sold land together. Like <laughs> we're always like thinking of like new entrepreneurship projects to work on together because we just have so much fun working together. And I love it because I can count on him. Like a lot of other people on this island are very flowy and it's very hard to get things done. But Aaron and I are some people who like live in Thailand for at least, like he's lived on the island for like seven years, you know, and he like creates things. He's a, he's a famous DJ who's like now on tour around the world. So really appreciate about showing up in the 3D because um, this, like having the masculine, like be able to be like someone you can count on, this creates so much 
relaxation in my nervous system when I'm just like, <sighs> like one of my favorite things about Aaron is that um, he loves driving me around. This might sound a very small thing, but here on the island, I have a scooter. I've had a car off and on um, of my own, but like Aaron always has a car and he's always like, I'll pick you up. Let's do errands together. Like, here's my errands. What do you got? And we just like have so much fun, like vibing in the car, eating snacks and listening to music and talking about business stuff and our feelings and, you know, and it's just like doing life together. And I just, <laughs> I just, I personally just love being driven around and it's just, it feels so nice. I don't know. It's like, I also love to drive, but like the idea of like, I don't have to think about this right now. And these are just things that like, they s might sound like really small things, but I really, really appreciate them. And they make me feel so good in my body. Um, okay, I'm talking about Ferdy for this one. I love how Ferdy helps like organize and simplify my life. He always jokes that I, I have this thing where I'm just like, oh, I'm so overwhelmed. I say this a lot because I realize I say this a lot because he makes fun of me where I'm like, all the things, I'm just so overwhelmed. And he's like, what are all the things? And I start naming off like things and he's just like, but it's not that big of a deal. You can just do this one first and then here's this thing. And it got to the point where he would ask me like, what are your things for this week? And he would put in like important things in his calendar just so that he could support me and remind me so I wouldn't forget about the things and I wouldn't also get overwhelmed by having to remember everything. Because <laughs> I had, um, you know, I've run my own business. I worked in corporate law for many years. I understand how to organize myself. And also I got really burnt out. Like I kind of looked at like things on my computer f when I first got to the island here a couple years ago. I got really burnt out by like being on screens because I had been on screens for like 10 years, like working remotely, working in an office. And the, the idea of putting things in a calendar on my phone, like because in the past working in an office, I felt like it was like imprisonment in a way because I was doing things that weren't my excitement. That when I first got to the island, oh, I just want to appreciate that it's raining right now and it's been so hot here on the island. We have a drought and I'm just so grateful that it's raining. I'm like looking outside and at the rain. So if you hear that, that is rain. So, so, so grateful it's raining. And the waterfalls will be full of water. Mm, so, so grateful. But yeah, so for a while I was having a really hard time like putting things in my calendar. I just wanted to like, honestly, for most of the lockdown here on the island, we didn't have COVID. And like, I would just put my phone away and like not look at it all day long. And I would just be in a waterfall or at the beach or just like flowing through the island. And I really needed that for a while in order to like come fully into my feminine energy. And also <laughs> structure is great. Structure helps us get things done in the 3D. Structure is important. And Faraday's a Virgo and he loves organizing things. So um, I love that he structures like my chaos magic and helps me keep, helps keep me accountable in the 3D because this is what I noticed with a lot of the feminine is we have so many ideas. We are so fucking creative. We are the muse. We are the artist. We are the muse. We, we, we can create everything in the world that we have the potential for all creation inside of us. Sometimes because of the things that are emotions, sometimes hormonal, sometimes um, just having a hard time, like we just in general for different reasons, like maybe self-worth things, maybe like low self-esteem. Sometimes we have a hard time really putting this out in the 3D in a way that like the world can see, in the way that we can impact the world. And this is what I really appreciate about Ferday. Like he helps, you know, he encourages me to do my podcast. He edits my podcast. He makes sure he puts it out there. He's always supporting me on his social media, like helping people see my podcast. And I just really appreciate this. Like, this is literally life changing for me um, because I've always wanted to make a podcast. I actually started one in 2018 and I just never stuck to it. Like, I just never like kept myself organized to do it. And Fernie is just like the most organized. Okay, I could just keep going. But do you understand? Like, this is really, really something that I need. And I feel like for a lot of women, if we let go of the idea, if we heal this belief that we have to do everything on our own, it's actually really amazing to, like, I know I can do everything on my own. But do I want to? Do I actually end up doing a lot of things? Um, 
no, I don't want to do a lot of, I don't want to do everything on my own. It's not fun. Personally, I love working in teams. Uh, I'm a generator, so I really love collaborating and having things to respond to. A generator on the human design is what I mean. And, um, and also, I've proven to myself that I can do everything on my own. And what I'll tell you is that it makes me really tired. And yeah, I can do it. Uh, but it makes me very tired and then I have less space to be in my emotions. I have less space to be in my softness. So why not allow the masculine who has this energy because they have a lot of times less emotional processing than women. Like they still have their own emotions, but just less than like less. So they have more space to do things in the 3D. Uh, the feminine energy is we are here to, you know, bring stuff in from spirit. We are here to be connected to the source because we have the ability to literally birth life through us. So we have more of a connection to source energy. If we allow ourselves this space, if we allow ourselves to uh, take a deep breath and be in our feminine. And when we give space and appreciate the masculine for showing up for us in this way, then it, it creates more space. And this is the positive feedback loop between the masculine and the feminine energy. Okay, I just realized that my hair is doing weird things. If you're watching visually, I don't know what's going on with my hair today, but sometimes I have, like, this is, <laughs> this is just being a woman. <laughs> like, Fairy's like, your hair looks great, amazing, all the time. And I'm just like, no, <laughs> no, it doesn't. What's happening? <laughs> Um, anyways, just give me one second. Okay, we're just doing that. It's happening. Um, so what is my next thing? I love how gentle, kind, and loving and caring men are. How patient and grounded they are despite. So this is despite the fact that society has raised them that they need to be tough and hide their feelings. So for me, like when I see a man like really allow himself to be in his emotions and to share those openly in a way that is showing like real vulnerability, like, oh, it melts my heart. Like it really does. And I want to talk about my friend Alistair. Alistair is a good friend of mine that I've had for like I don't know, at least six years now. I, I met him in Chiang Mai and, you know, we've hung out in Europe. We've hung out. He came here last high season and now he's going to create a base, a permanent base here on the island. And he's one of my closest friends and he shares his feelings in such a calm and grounded way. And it's like the most beautiful thing I have had the privilege of like witnessing and honoring and like holding space for. And also one thing I really appreciate about Alistair is that he notices very small details about who I am as a person and like reflects these back in a way where I can really feel that he's just doing it to like witness and honor me without it's basically like no taking energy like he's not trying to get anything out of it by saying saying this to me he just is like you're amazing and I appreciated how you like really showed up for this person the other day and him and I admin my I have a community group chat here on the island on whatsapp with like a thousand people in it and he's one of he's my main admin besides me on it and we like we host like this is yeah it's a group chat but like we actually host a lot of things that are happening in the community through this group chat it's like a it's a prototype for a new earth community because there's so many things that happen in like the interpersonal dynamics of the group chat like a lot of people like people value it so much because it's not just it is our community, you know, it's like things are happening, people are meeting up, people are getting, you know, and also because it's this, people's, um, when you're in a community long enough and in a real community that you feel like you belong in, it usually brings up your shadows, like anything that's not healed around your family dynamic, your family dynamic. So <clears throat> there is times where people are acting like children in this community chat, even though they're grown people. And Alistair and I have to like have little meetings about, you know, what, how to, how to respond in a loving way. How do we respond in a way that is healing instead of just kicking them out and banning them? Because for a lot of people, this community chat and this community that we have built is their family here on the island. It's like they're, they, they, it's like their 
connection to community. I, it's so many things that it's like hard to put into like physical world, words, but when you feel it, this vibration of actually belonging for the first time, people get very, very sensitive around if they get kicked out, they, they get very triggered and all this stuff. So anyways, so this takes someone who is gentle, kind, loving. This is us being spiritual parents to our community. And Alistair is the best man to do this with. And I so appreciate him. And he really, what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes in my community here on Copenhagen that most people will never know about how, how I show up for people. Like people who get in scooter accidents and I'm helping them. People who, who have problems with the police and I show up and I defend them and I get lawyers for them. And, and like animals who are abandoned and I like find like, uh, like owner, like, um, parents, <laughs> like I find places to house them and just like whatever I can do. This, these are my ki I view them as my spiritual children. Like this is, this is my family. Even if I don't like the, the group chat, was originally just my friends who I was in lockdown with started with like 30 people and then I a little people wanted to be in this and these 30 people we had a family dinner every Thursday with and we would do a sharing round like a group sharing round and this was this was literally we called it Thursday family dinner so this is the core of this group chat and now it's grown to over a thousand people but the energy is still there and and I really view this. So even if people are in there and I don't know them personally, I view them as my community. And you can see how people really show up for each other. And th I just find it so, so beautiful. I'm going on a tangent there, but um, I just really appreciate that Alistair is someone I can do all of these things with. And I really appreciate how he really sits back and observes who I am as a person and honors that and witnesses it and speaks it and in such a beautiful and eloquent way and also in a way where I can really tell that he's like giving to me. He's not trying to take anything from me. So I invite you to take a deep breath on that. <clears throat> and you know, when, we, when I invite you to take a deep breath, I really invite you to sigh, like make a noise when you, when you, um, when you breathe out because when you sigh it actually activates your body to that your body is safe like when because when you subconsciously sigh like when you're like ah, uh, <laughs> that was a really funny one when you subconsciously sh sigh it's actually you're because you're satisfied and your body takes this as oh okay so we're in a safe place we're satisfied, I can just relax. So when you create this safety and you just sigh throughout the day, whenever you think about it, like take a deep breath and sigh, you are activating subconsciously your nervous system that it's safe. So you can actually rewire your nervous system to believe in safety and to program it. To cr and this is how you create more safety in your life. So I invite you to take a deep breath and sigh. If you're watching visually, you can just see what is happening with me and my hair today. It's a funny conversation I'm having with my hair. Okay, so um, so another thing I really love about men is I love how passionate they can be about the things that they love, like, and the things they're creating in the world. So, like, their fierce determination, their dedication, when they have a goal, they're like, I'm going for it, it's happening. Um, and, again, this is, I'll bring up Faraday in this conversation, because when I, <laughs> when I, um, you know, like, I love, I love making podcasts. I could make a podcast every day. Uh, do I make a podcast every day? No, because I forget. I get in my flow. I journal about what I want to say. I have an unlimited list of things that I want to make a podcast about. But the creating it in the 3D, I just get in my flow and then the whole day's over and I'm like, oh, I didn't make one. And then, you know, what really motivates me is when I see Faraday get up in the morning and 
get his coffee going and the first thing he does is make a podcast and he's so excited about it he's so passionate about it he fucking loves sharing his vibration and showing up for the collective in this way and it really inspires and activates me when I see him come out of the room and he's like I just made a podcast it was amazing I feel so great oh my god I'm like I want to make a podcast that looks fun <laughs> and like oh yeah I should do that like da, da, da. and then yeah it just really helps me to get going and do it like that's literally why I'm making one right now <laughs> so I appreciate that um and something I also love about Faraday is that he is so stable and sometimes he doesn't want to be the stable one um But I want to say that I really appreciate that he does this because we go back and forth. Like, I do believe that men and women should both be able to host each other. It's not like, like, we're not children. We're both adults, right? Like, I can take care of myself. He can take care of himself. And also, there's times when one of you needs to go into your darkness. You need to heal some trauma. There's times when one of you are sick. There's times when you know, like someone is feeling really upset or emotional about something. And from an emotional standpoint, there's, (laughs) I would say, a higher amount of times that I am feeling emotionally upset or unstable. And this is just me being like, defined emotions on human design this is my emotional chaos this is you could say all the things this is my moon in scorpio all whatever it is i'm an emotional person and i also love this about myself and faraday is very emotionally stable and i really love that he's always like bringing it back around something positive or like reminding me of what's positive and (coughs) this just makes me feel really good (laughs) I just keep going with my hair. If you can't see visually, I'm just like, I'm feeling very hot right now. Um, I think just it's this t-shirt. It's also just that it's just fucking hot season. And also my hair, (laughs) just like, I feel like, wait, hold on. I think it's just mostly that it's just super hot. And I feel like my hair is really hot and sticky. So we're just going to leave that there. Um, (laughs) Okay, so back to... Yeah, so something also I really love about Faraday, I'm talking about Faraday a lot in this episode, I really love that he, like, sees me as the goddess that I am. Because it's one thing for a man to, like, really appreciate who you are as a person. It's another thing for them to think that you're beautiful and appreciate your beauty. All of that's amazing. It's a whole other level for a man to, like, understand... a woman's connection to the spirit world and how and like see from a spiritual perspective how powerful a woman is and witness that like and actually be able to like connect to that in a conscious way if you don't understand what I'm saying it's okay but if you do you get it right and Faraday really gets this about me and he understands my spiritual power and who I am in the timeline in this way and this makes me feel really seen and I also just love like how he values me as like the most important thing in his universe and just loves me so much I'll share a story so I was (coughs) we were at the gym this is I think I don't remember I I just remember it was really rainy that day and we we took two separate scooters and then we left the gym at the same time and he's like, okay, I'll see you at home. And I was like, yeah, yeah, see you. And then I remembered that I needed to go do an errand somewhere and I ended up going to do the errand first before I went home and it started pouring really, really hard. And I was just like, I'm determined to do this errand. I don't care if I, you know, get super wet. I'm already wet, it's whatever. And then it just took me like probably like 10 minutes to come home. And I came home and Faraday was rushing out the door, like running. And I'm like, babe, where are you going? (laughs) And he's like, where were you? I was so worried. I was so worried about you. And I was like, what are you talking about? I just went to go pick up the fruit. And he was just like, you know, it was raining really hard. And he was like genuinely really upset, like not angry at me. He was just like worried. 
And he was just like, I was just like, I just had all of these things in my head because you were like, you were going to come home, but then it started pouring. And I was just thinking like, maybe you're on the side of the road somewhere. And I was running out to get on my bike and come look for you. And I was like, and I just kind of was laughing. I'm like, babe, everything's okay. I was just, just going to get the fruit. And, <clears throat> and he was just like, I don't think you understand how much you mean to me. If anything ever happened to you, I don't know if I could handle it. Like if anything ever happened and you were hurt or like, I just love you so, so much. And I know it's my job to be your protector and like take care of you. And I was like, oh, thank you. Like that really, <laughs> like, you know, in the moment I was just kind of surprised and I laughed it off. But like, I really think about that a lot. I think about like, wow, he really cares about me that much, you know, because in the everyday life, I think sometimes we, <clears throat> we know that we love each other, but you know, it's like, there's then there's like this deeper love and appreciation. And I, I know that I have the same for him. Like I will be at his side, ride or die. Like if anything ever happens and I have been <laughs> throughout our relationship, um, but I really appreciate that he, like, takes his role as my the my man, like the my person, to like really take care of me, and he takes it so seriously, <coughs> and he just loves me so much. Um, something that I <coughs> I love to share is like, men, you don't realize how nice it is when you're just nearby. Like, especially when I'm in public, like, I, th I imagine, um, like, Daenerys, like, with all of her men around that are her protectors, like, they're like the dragons, and then, like, all the men who love her and appreciate her and support her so that she can do, um, do what she needs to in the world, right? And there has been many times in my life where I've been in situations where, you know, it might not be the safest country or it might not be like the safest emotional or political situation. <laughs> I could go into so many stories, but I have these men around me that are just like backing me up physically, emotionally, politically. They just got my back. And that makes me feel so fucking good. That makes me feel so, so, so good. I'll give you a pretty simple example is um, I go to the gym here and <laughs> gyms on this island are such a funny experience because um, there's just like this really weird gym culture where every, <laughs> okay, I just put it like this. The, it's like hookup culture at the gym because this island is a very like sexual energy and a lot of people here are pretty much almost naked all the time. Like, you know, everyone's running around in their bathing suits and we have a beach that we can go naked at sunset. And so it's just like naked, 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 sexy, sexy, sexy. And a lot of people are coming fully into their sexual energy power, right? And at the gym, I, there's just like a lot of this like testosterone energy and like men checking you out and... And sometimes I, and okay, I go to the gym to get super fucking sweaty and gross and like to listen to something on my headphones, either a podcast or some like Afrobeats music and dance. If I'm dancing while I'm waiting for my next rep on my like set or whatever, I'm not there to be witnessed. Like I'm not putting on a show when I'm dancing. Like I'm just like dancing to my music. I'm just in my own energy. I would do this at home, you know, if I had the weights at home. But in this energy at the gym, it's like all eyes on. <laughs> it just feels, it feels like a bunch of like lions who are just hanging out and they're all like trying to get attention and they're just like licking their paws and just like oh that, that one's a juicy one should we go after that one and you know and like they're all like trying to put on more weights and like see if you're seeing their reps and stuff and I'm just like I don't, I don't know dude I just want to like lift weights and be strong and get really sweat like I really don't I do not there's women who go to this gym and they I can see them because I'm in the bathroom when I'm getting changed and they're putting on makeup to go work out so that just kind of shows you the vibe of the gym like the women are there to be seen and this is fine everyone's playing the game I'm not playing the game I'm like getting as sweaty as possible and as gross as possible and want to be in my own energy and so when 
I'm in this situation, whenever there is a man that is my friend that's also training at the gym, whether it's Ferdy or my friend Dan or there's my friend John, there's a ton of friends who come through. I just love having them around because for me, it's like I can talk to them if I want to, but also if we both have our headphones on and we're just like training next to each other, it just makes me feel safe and it makes me feel like there's like this bubble of like protection. I don't feel physically unsafe around the rest of the men in the gym. That's not what it is. It's just this kind of like, I don't, I, I, it's hard to put into words, but it just feels good. I, I think that's all I'm going to say. Like, it just feels good. If you get it, you get it, you know? Some of this we don't need to like really understand on a conscious level. It's sometimes it's just in our bodies. Sometimes it's a nervous system thing. Um, I have a friend, Dan the Baker, that I have made podcasts with. He's one of my closest friends here on the island. And something I really love about Dan is that he will, if I come to him and I'm like, crying or I need to be hosted emotionally he will dive right in to this emotional conversation as the Capricorn mountain that he is just like holding the ground letting me cry letting like following my story understanding reflecting back like he's like he's here for all of it right and then at the end of that he's like yeah, but what, of it, what does any of it matter? Like after he's hosted me, after he's like really held space. If he said that in the beginning, I would slap him. But at th- when he says it at the end, I just go, I just, even if I'm crying, I just start laughing so hard because I'm just like, yeah, what does any of this matter? Like, come on, why am I taking this so seriously? <coughs> and I just really appreciate this about him because it's just like, he can hold the space and like go through it and like carry the conversation with me because there's some men who are just like, yeah, you got emotions. Okay. Just talk. Okay. Yeah. I heard you. Thank you for talking. And I'm like, no, that's not what I need. I need someone who's like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. That sounds really hard. Or, or how did this actually feel? And like ask a specific question to go deeper into the emotional reality so that I can get to the bottom of why I'm actually upset which is usually a negative belief that I have or some fear that I have. And then I can look at it and say, do I actually want to believe this? Or like, even if this does happen, I'm going to be okay, you know, but I needed to sometimes play that all the way out. And it's so nice to do that with someone who is down for it and understands how to do it and can play the game with me. And then what I love about the masculine, especially in Dan, is that you know, he can feel all the feelings and he can carry the conversation, but he just doesn't take it as seriously as I do. Like, I think this might be like a a men, woman thing. Uh, And I love that because it gives me a different perspective and it makes me also laugh, you know, and Faraday also does this. Um, But I really feel like Dan does this in a level where it just <laughs> maybe it's also because Dan and I have been friends for so long and we've always been friends. Like there's something really special about having a guy in your life who is like a brother, they've never hit on you and you just love each other so much and that is what you're here for. Like this is the soul contract that you have decided maybe even before you got into the timeline because when I when Dan and I from the moment him and I first met, we were just like just loving each other so much and we've had so many adventures here on this island together (laughs) and just had so much fun um something I really love about men is like like with Ferdy he is so good at playing he is so good at being like childish but in such an adorable way that activates the inner child in me and like everyone around him and it gives us all permission to be like even more of our goofy authentic selves and he does not care about this is also another thing I love about him and many men that I have in my life is he does not give a fuck what anyone thinks about him he doesn't care if he's wearing the weirdest clothes or you know if he's got his shirt inside out or you know, I, there's, there's just so many times where I'm like, are you really going to wear that out the door? Like, cause our fashion senses are very different. And, um, he's just like, I don't care. Like, I really don't care. I just like, this is functional. I bought 10 of these 
pairs of pants, you know, da da da. And I'm just like, okay, cool. Like, and then it makes me appreciate it even more because I'm just like, yeah, just rock it. Like it, confidence is everything. Like confidence is sexy. Confidence in being yourself. Like if someone, if a guy was like wearing a pair of pants or shoes or something because he thinks it makes him cool, you can feel the energy behind that. But if he's just like, I fucking love this or I don't really care what I look like right now. I just love myself. Then that is very sexy. And it makes me feel like, yeah, I can be myself even more. Like I am very much myself in the timeline, but it's really nice to hang out with that energy. And yeah, I just want to go back to like, Ferdy is, <laughs> there is so much that you all don't see. Like he posts so much on social media of his goofiness and who he is. But I'm telling you, it is a constant 24 seven comedy show in our house of like him just like <laughs> doing the funniest things. And like, I'll come into the bedroom and he's like hiding behind the, the curtain and all I see is his feet and he's like surprising me or he's like I'm like laying in bed and he comes in with the cat on a pillow just like the queen is here to meet the princess give her a kiss and I'm just like oh my god like there's just so many it's and it's like it's the timing of it it's like the little cute moments it's just the the fact that he chooses to make life like fun and I love that and I think that we could all learn from allowing ourselves to be our inner children more. It's a balance in the middle, right? But so many people have lost this connection to their inner child when they become an adult. And I love seeing a man who is so in his power and so confident in who he is that he allows his inner child to come out and play and feel safe to do that because the world is teaching men don't do like don't 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 let your inner child be come out you need to be serious you need this is what a strong man does he does you know like and like sometimes they even talk like that and i'm just like no no that's not nice like please don't just be yourself like just be goofy life is too serious already like we need to lighten it up and something i will say is like the more spiritually awake you become the more you realize it's all one big joke like life And that you like you don't need to take things seriously. So I find it really attractive when men realize this and they kind of like lead the way on this in a lot of ways. I just think it's really beautiful. Um, Something I also really love about men is like when they allow themselves to be vulnerable around women and they allow us to love them and appreciate them like they actually let it in and I'll give an example of my my uh friend Bajesh um we were hanging out at my house like a bunch of us just chilling like one night after we were a full day of fun and I I said to him like why don't you put your head in my lap and I'll give you a head massage and we're all just talking and he was just like at first he was like oh no no it's okay and I'm like, babe, put your head in my lap. Come on. And then he, he did. And I was just like massaging his head and like telling him that I really appreciate him. And then I ended up like talking to someone else next to me and he was talking to someone else. And then he said to me at one point, he was like, you know, you can just stop whenever you want to. And I said to him, babe, I will stop whenever I want to. But right now I am having a very good time giving you a head massage and please just let it in. I don't, I don't want anything from this. I just really appreciate giving this to you because you're always showing up for me and you're just an amazing man in my life. So of course I'm going to do this. Let me nurture you. And he told me later, like for me, I didn't think anything of this, right? Cause I do this all the time to the men in my life and, and the women in my life, but I'm talking about men in this podcast And later he told me like, wow, that was actually very healing for him because he grew up uh, with a mother that was very like transactional. Like every time she gave him something, she wanted something in return. There was a lot of like expectations growing up in like an Indian family. And I was just like, that's not me, (laughs) you know, but it's like, this is what I mean by like, I love that he was able to shift that and appreciate, but this is like, this is the healing that we're doing. You know, this is the healing that everyone has the opportunity to do in the timeline between men and women, because we have, all of us have 
things that can be healed and when we do this we create unity on this earth and then we can work together to build this is what we're here for is to build something better but we have to play together we have to come together in order and heal all this so we can actually play and why would you play i mean like creating the earth that we want to live on right um yeah something i want to say is i love how willing men are they really to help women they really they really in their heart of hearts they want to show up for us and i'm speaking to you men right now that they're we really appreciate this even if we are programmed to come across that we can do everything on our own and that we have to prove to ourselves that we can do everything on our own and sometimes in the middle of that process we don't appreciate you for showing up for us and sometimes we even get upset at you for doing things because we think we have to do everything on our own but in reality we really 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 appreciate you for doing for just showing up and for the energy and the being willing and the wanting to be there for us and to help us i notice this a lot like in um in certain cultures especially like in german culture i was talking to some of my friends who um they actually said they stopped dating german women because they were like i i just wanted to take like they're german they're one of one of my best friends he's half german half um italian and he was just like yeah every time i wanted to take a woman out to dinner and pay for her she would like get upset at me he had a he had a long-term girlfriend that was german and he was just like she was just like wanting to make sure that she paid for everything she had a spreadsheet so she could be accountable for what she paid for so that she didn't have to ever owe me anything and he was like I was just so confused by this because I grew up with an Italian mom who was like and in Italy and he first half of his life was in Italy so he's like I grew up in a culture where you know men show up for women and it's in a way because we appreciate you and we just love you and we this is what we do like we love doing this and it's not to make you anything lesser it's not to owe you anything or to make you owe us anything it's just this is just what we do and it feels good and he was just like I just felt so frozen because anytime I wanted to show up for my girlfriend in some way I felt like oh my god am I gonna offend her am I gonna is she gonna think that I'm like trying to disempower her by wanting to show up for her and I was like babe I feel so bad for that conversation I was like or for that situation I'm like you can pay for anything for me and I'll always appreciate you. And he's like laughing. He's like, I know, I know. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I want to just put a plug in for for Feta right now. I love him so much. Uh, He's the one who made my AI clone of me and he's an amazing tech guy. And um, I know we're going to build so much more together in the future. And... Yeah, he always shows up for me. And we, we have this thing where we like think about each other exactly the same moment. He's in Italy right now, back home visiting his family. And yesterday I was driving home and I was thinking of him and I came home and he was just like responding to something that I had said and like just telling me how much he appreciates me and he misses me and he really wants me to come visit Italy. And I was just like, I was literally thinking of you in the same moment. And he's like, you know, our vibrations are connecting. It's happening. We're aligning. And... Yeah, I just really, really appreciate how much he's always shown up for me and just really cares and is like emotionally always there. He's got, he's a Pisces, moon and Scorpio, rising cancer. So it's just like all emotions. (laughs) Um, And yeah, I just love him. I have a very special place in my heart for him. Ooh, something I really love about men is when they allow their artistic passionate side of themselves to come out so with Alistair my friend I talked about earlier um he is a business we met because he's a business consultant and when I was doing more business things in the corporate world somehow we got connected like way back and now we make music together (laughs) and he plays guitar and he sings and he's he sings like um like Radiohead or Trevor Hall like he has this like very beautiful like folk acoustic vibe and he writes his own music and he sings and he just loves and 
one time he wrote a song about me and I was just like, he sang it to me on my birthday and I was on mushrooms and I was just crying. So it was just so beautiful. Even when I'm not on mushrooms, he makes me cry a lot with his music because it's just so, so, so beautiful. And I know, and it's been a journey for him in his life because for a lot of his life, he was thinking that he needed to be serious and businessy and like kind of put his artistic side in the closet and like hiding it like he was shamed for wanting to be artistic <coughs> artistic not artistic <laughs> artistic growing up um and I, I'm just so grateful that he's allowing the side of himself out because the world needs this and it's so beautiful and now he's been hosting me to get my voice out there more and I have a goal of creating music and publishing some songs I've always loved music so much and I love to sing and um yeah it's happening we're doing it and um I just really really appreciate that about him so I could go on I have I even have like a list of men here that I have like one I want to give a shout out to my godfather Richard who has always always shown up for me like he came into my life probably like seven years ago or longer I don't know what time is but Again, this was from, cause he's a retired, um, very successful business person, and he loves giving free uh, mentorship to entrepreneurs. And that's how we first got connected. Like, he was a business mentor of mine. And him and his wife have become, like, my godparents. And Richard and I have a very, very special connection. And I've, like, they've come to stay with me in Thailand. I've gone to stay with them in Europe. And... Um, yeah, they, they're just like always there. Like we have a WhatsApp, uh, group chat where we call it like our family chat and like, they know everything about my life and all the stuff that's going on with me, my relationships, my business, like everything. And they're just so there for me, both of them. And for me, it's just like so special to have this positive connection with a, a father figure because I didn't have this growing up. And so, like, I can call Richard. <laughs> the, uh, a couple weeks ago, I called Richard. So there, he's in France right now. No, oh, wait. Uh, he's in, they have houses all over Europe. So I, uh, anyways, I think he was in Switzerland at the time. And it was, like, 3 a.m. here in Thailand. And, and so it was, like, in the evening there. And I just couldn't sleep. And so I went for a walk on the beach, and I called Richard. And he just, like, he just heard me out for, like, an hour of whatever I was, like, afraid of or scared of and what I was upset about and he was like I'm here all oh, that's I'm all oh, sweetie I'm here that makes sense and what do you need and like let's talk about this here's the options and I was just like ah like it helped work it all out of me and I felt so supported and so seen and just so loved and I was able to go home and go to sleep immediately and I just well I could say so much more but like that that connection has been so so healing and also to have a, a father figure man in my life that is not my father and who has always just shown me this unconditional love like him and, and Heather have said like yeah we 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 have officially adopted you you are one of our spiritual kids like spirit soul family you know and I adopted them as well and I just love it and I'm also really close to Heather I just, speaking about men in this podcast, I really want to honor how much Richard shows up in my life. Um, and the last two that I want to talk about is Andre and Nathan. Uh, they are, um, they're both like, I think in their early 60s and they live in the bays in the Wainam area, which is on the other side of the island. And they both have houses there. So Nathan built Wainam like <laughs> back in the 80s. He's the one who created Wynom and created what it is today. And he is just a genius in many, many ways. And his main goal in his life is to create magic and to create community. And he has done this over and over and over again for the last 30 years. And he has probably my favorite house on this island, which is this beautiful villa with a pool overlooking the sea in Wynom, which is like my favorite place in the world. And for very key moments in my life when I really needed to get away and be somewhere that is, it's just, 
he's from California like me. So he built the house with three story ceilings and just like the most artistically activating and beautiful home that you can have. And it's like exactly how I would build my own house (laughs) if I were to build one. And, um, he's always offered it to me whenever I needed it. You know, he's just like, here, come stay. I, I can organize everything for you. And like, that's where I first did DMT, uh, was in that house. And oh my God, it was so, it's like the most magical place to do that. Like when I've broken up with boyfriends, like I would go stay there. When Faraday and I first got together, we went and stayed there for a couple of weeks. Like he's just always, 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 whatever he can offer, he's showing up and offering it. And I really appreciate that. And Andre is the same. He's like this amazing artistic guy who is in his <coughs> late 50s, early 60s. And he is a photographer and a multimedia artist and a DJ. And he has this really beautiful house overlooking the sea. With He built a Japanese onsen there. And it's all sustainable, like solar panels. And just the, the, his artistic way of building everything in the most sustainable way is so inspiring. And he's always offering for me to come stay. He has an extra like little bungalow on the property. And I've stayed there sometimes for like weeks at a time. And and a lot of times he's like out of the country on like work trips for his photography. And he's just like, yeah, come stay, come hang out with the cats, bring Afro, like whatever you need. How can I make it more comfortable for you? I'm here for you, babe. Like, I love you. And I'm just like, I am so supported by all of these amazing men in my life and they all show up for me in like very specific ways just when I need it. And I I just feel so held and protected and seen and loved. And I really invite all of you to appreciate the men that you have in your life. And if you are a man, I really... I really hope that you take all of this in and understand that we women really do appreciate you, even if it's hard for us to speak it up right now in the timeline and that that is going to shift. And by podcasts like this, it does shift. And if you're a woman, I really activate you to reach out to the men that you have in your life that you appreciate and tell them specific ways how you love them and you're grateful for them and you're thankful for them. And just give them a hug and tell them that you love them, you know, just like we need the masculine to like hear us out for all the things that have happened to us just by being in a female body, like how healing it is to be heard by the masculine and to be heard of just like what we go through as the feminine, like that is so fucking needed for men to listen to women and like just listen to their stories, like, and not in a way where we're shaming men, but just like, I need to be heard by the masculine. This is how we actually heal it. This is how we come full circle and come home. And the other, on the flip side of that, men need to be appreciated. They need to be seen. They need to know that they have a place, that they have a place that we value, that they are like, they need it. We need them. We value them. We appreciate them. Please keep being yourself. Please keep showing up. We love you. They, this is so healing for a man to hear because at the end of the day, like, if a man is completely healed and he's in his divine masculine, he knows that, yeah, he can go out and build an empire, but what is the point of doing that if there's not women that he loves in his life that he's doing it for, or he's, a, you know, doing it together with, or he's taking care, doing it for, like doing it to take care of them, whether it's his sisters, his mom, his friends, his partner, his, his daughters, like, this is like what the end goal is in life for men is to protect and provide for the, the the women that they love because this is how we all come home because when we when men do that we can be in our full feminine we can birth children we can appreciate them we can nurture the men in our life and we can give this energy back and this is what home feels like so I just gave a lot to you and I hope you appreciate it and I hope you and whoever's watching visually enjoyed my chaos magic with my hair because I don't know what's going on with my hair and I think it's just my own emotional reality today. It's like the day before I fly out to Japan so I'm just a little bit like so many fun things to do and also like ah, chaos, chaos but in a beautiful way because I'm also just really excited to travel and I'm trying to remember everything I need to do and I have a bunch of meetings today as well. 
going to sigh that one out um, and I'm going to go and I love you and I hope that this was activating, inspiring, nurturing, healing for you and I activate you to spread this energy in whatever way is inspiring for you. And I will see you in the next podcast. Sending you so much love. Bye.